Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, it's me, Surya. Today I'm sharing with you how I made this wrap jacket, which is inspired by Cecile, Cecile Banson, Banson, which I first saw on With Wendy's channel. She made a version that was a lot more similar to the Cecile Banson wrap jacket, which is a quilted jacket. So my jacket is a different version from the one that With Wendy made. Uh, mine is uh, just some random fabric that I picked up. It's not quilted at all. And I also decided to add um, facing and lining inside. So those are the main differences from my version versus With Wendy's version versus Cecile Banson's original. Uh, design. So both of the fabrics that I got, the outer fabric and the lining fabric, are from the fabric store. The outer fabric I just picked up on sale. It's a strange sort of fabric. It has these little um, bally dots on them. I'm pretty sure it's like a poly... poly cotton. I don't know. I didn't really look at the tag properly. The lining fabric that I got um, is also from the fabric store, as mentioned, and it's a cotton silk pretty sure. I initially bought it for another project like a really long time ago. So it turned out pretty good. I was actually surprised that I had enough fabric because I couldn't for the life of me remember how much fabric I bought. Also, I could have just measured it, but I did not. So, so I'm just going to run through the basic steps of how I made this wrap jacket just so you have some sort of inspiration and guide on perhaps making your own type of wrap jacket. Basically, I just followed the same advice that With Wendy had, which was to grab a jacket that you already have or an existing sort of garment that you have, which you're happy with in terms of like having perhaps like drop shoulders. So I just used a wool jacket that I have in my wardrobe, which I thrifted um, a really long time ago and I wear it quite often. Unfortunately, it's not lined, so maybe I should attach some lining, although it seems like a bit of a task. Um, so I used that as a template. And basically I just traced around the front bodice, the back bodice and the sleeves to create um, a base from which to then mangle and turn into a wrap jacket. I'm just running through all of the pattern pieces that I have for this particular design. So this is the front um, and this is the facing. All of them were drafted with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So front facing, the front. This is cut one pair. This is also cut one pair. This is the back piece. Um, so this is cut on the fold. So fold line, so cut one on fold. And then this is the back neck facing, which is a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. And here we have notches as to where the sleeves go. One notch here, one notch there. So this is actually what the original sleeve um, looks like for this boxy jacket that I had. And so what I did to create my puffy short sleeve was to then hem this to the amount that I wanted and then split this down the middle and sort of just push it out as much as I liked to have enough volume to create the puff. So this is what the sleeve looked like in the end. I didn't have enough fabric. Like this is how big I wanted it to be. So that's the front. This part attaches to the front and this is attaching to the back. The sleeve is not um, particularly different. I mean, it's not vastly different from either backside or the front. So, you know, and once you gather it up, um, it really makes no difference. So I wanted it to be this big, but I didn't have enough fabric. So I ended up having to sort of make it a bit smaller. Yes. And it ended up looking about this much. But originally I would have liked it to have a bit more puff. Although given the fact that I'm working with a fabric that was um, very structured and kept its shape, I think um, a smaller sleeve wasn't that bad. So. Yes, originally it was meant to be quite large. This is the pocket piece, so cut two pairs. The ties, cut four. So also you will need to have um, a front lining piece, so cut one pair. And then a back lining piece, cut one on fold. So the skirt is a little bit tricky. Um, just because it has to have this slashed part here to create your mitered corners for 
the front of the jacket. So this is the pattern piece that I created for the skirt section. Um, it is 62.5 centimeters in width and 47 centimeters in length. Because I drafted this jacket to have mitered corners, as you can see, I have two front panels, one cut in the full with a mitered corner, um, which is 62.5 centimeters in width. Another front panel cut on the fold with only one side having a mitered corner, 125 centimeters in width. And finally, the back panel cut on a fold with no mitered corners, so just a plain rectangle. That is 125 centimeters in width. And then after that, you would also need some lining. So you need lining for the skirt. Um, so I would just cut exactly the same. So one of these on the full and then two on the fold to have the exact same width as your out of fabric skirt. And so once I had all my pattern pieces together, I decided to make a sample or a toile, as they say, uh, just because this was my own pattern drafting, uh, which is not very good. So I decided to make a sample first to make sure that um, the measurements were right and what I was doing was right, because uh, I was making, you know, facing and lining and all that kind of stuff. And it started to get a little bit tricky. Uh, so I definitely recommend that if you're creating this jacket or you're doing anything from scratch and you're just um, using your existing garments as a guide and then creating patterns from them to definitely start with making a sample first before you you know cut into your precious real fabric so it took me like three weeks to mess around with the sample that i was making to make sure that all of my pattern pieces were correct and it was making sense. I made a lot of tweaks to the pattern pieces um, and I learned a lot from the process of doing this. So after my adventure of making the sample, the process of constructing the jacket itself is actually pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna run through the steps now so you know how to like sew a wrap jacket similar to this. Um, it may not be perfect. I'm sorry in advance if like some of the instructions that I'm giving you is not clear enough or are potentially incorrect, but this is just what has worked for me in the construction of this particular jacket. So step one is to sew together the shoulders of the front and back pieces together, right sides facing, and then after you've sewn that, just press open the seams. So step two is attaching the sleeves to the bodice. So make sure that on your pattern pieces, you've notched where your sleeve starts and ends. Uh, then grab your sleeve pattern and sew basting stitch along the sleeve head. So there's two lines of basting stitch along the sleeve head. Gather it up and attach it to your bodice. You do this by flipping out your front and back pieces like so, right sides up, and then attach your sleeve between the notches, right sides together and so. So I just wanna note that you can use whatever seam allowance you like. I like to use one and a half centimeters worth of seam allowance because I just like to have extra room when I'm sewing in the event that perhaps I need to let out something um, then I have like you know enough seam allowance to allow for that uh, but then again this this jacket is extremely boxy and quite large so I really like yeah you'll probably be taking it in more than you would be letting it out so this is what it looks like now that I've put the sleeve on so the sleeve was attached here, right sides facing, and then when you flip it around, this is what it looks like. So now I want to sew up the inner arm seam, but because this is a wrap top, I need to also add in ties. So two ties that will be from here on these ends. One of them will tie inside, so I need to put a tie in here in the side seam and one will tie on the outside so I need one two three four four ties in total so I made my ties six centimeters in width by 45 centimeters in length with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance added all the way around my ties fit right in with the front points I guess you would call them because it is three centimeters in width once you take away the seam allowance from attaching uh, to the future facing. So you want your ties to be the same width of this wrap point on your jacket so that it looks even. So I've cut out four strips. Um, this one is a little bit wonky looking, but that's all right. This one can live on the inside of the jacket where it is not going to be seen. But yes, this is the pattern. It will, right sides facing, just fold in half. 
and then I will sew all the way around from this edge up and sew around and then turn it right sides out then we'll have a nice little tie to put on the inside so I normally use a loop turner when I you know turn ties in like right ways out but I find the loop turner especially if you don't do it properly it sort of like snags the fabric a lot and it damages it I found that the um, using a pencil just to push out push it out right ways out seems to work a lot better and it's um, less damaging to the ties. I think there are other ways to do it with like a needle and thread. You can do that as well if it's super thin and you don't want to damage it. But yeah, the loop turner, this little guy here, this thing is like evil and I hate it. So yeah, it's sometimes it works and then other times it doesn't. Most of the time it just damages my fabric. So I'm not much of a fan of the loop turner at the moment. So now that I've made four straps I need to put one on the inside seam one on the outside seam and then these two will attach to the openings here one strap here and then the other one on the other side so I'm gonna pick one of the straps that is most attractive to go on the outside bearing in mind that I've got a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. Just gonna mark two centimeters up from the edge and one and a half in from here and pin it into place. And on this side, I will put this on the inside. So this one. So one on the outside, one on the inside, inside here. So we pin this together and sew along the inner arm seam. Okay, so this is what the jacket is looking like. I have just pinned the inner arm seam, which I'm now going to sew. And I've also put the ties on it. So one on the inside and one sticking out on the outside because you will um, wrap the top around you, the tie, one will go on the inside and then the other one will wrap around the outside and tie on the outside. At some point now you might want to start cleaning up all the loose threads that are on your bodice and maybe like overlocking all the raw edges. I didn't really use my overlocker this time because the fabric was a little bit thick and if you watch any of my previous videos where I accidentally um, destroyed my overlocker when I put it to use making jeans, uh, you'll know that it's a little bit weak. So I was scared to use my overlocker to overlock these particular um, raw edges on this um, fabric just because it was a little bit thick and I'm pretty sure I would have broken more things. So I decided to zigzag stitch with my normal sewing machine just around the raw edges and stuff. Bearing in mind that because this is going to be a line jacket you're not going to see any of the inside anyway because it's all going to be enclosed but I do recommend um, just to have extra stability I guess or just a peace of mind to overlock any raw seams and edges because I don't know, you just don't want it to accidentally tear apart when you're wearing it. And I feel like overlocking does help with that. But mostly it's just to keep your seams from fraying over time. Mm. I still feel like I should have made the sleeves bigger, but not enough fabric. Nope, one on the inside, one on the outside. Oh, so these will wrap in and around. So, hmm, I feel like the neckline is a bit too high yet again. Okay, well, <laughs> I feel like the drop shoulderiness of this is too dropped because this puffiness is, for this particular fabric, is very extreme. I feel like this needs to be 
a little bit higher to make more sense. Ah, uh, but I don't know. Possibly I could get away with it. Maybe. Mm. Okay, well, there's nothing I can do about it. So let's just plow ahead um, and see how it turns out. So now that I've done this, I'm going to put on the facing. I have this front facing, which is the front that goes around like this. One, two of these. The back facing. So we're going to sew the back facing to the front facing and then sew it onto the bodice. So grab your front and back neck facing and sew them together with right sides facing and then press up in the seams. Okay, so I sewed it down and this is what it looks like. So now I'm going to attach this facing to the jacket. Right sides facing. I'm going to attach this to the jacket all the way around. So, eh, like this. Make sure the seams are facing each other. Now that we get to this point, we also have to stick in one of the ties at the end. So I'm going to put this one in and just be mindful that it has to stick in between the one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So just have to make sure it doesn't get caught while I'm sewing. Yep. This one. One and a half, so stick that inside. Oop. Just so down here, you don't need to sew this part because this will be attached to the skirt bit or like the bottom hem. So again, at this end, I want to stick in my little strap. So we're going to put it in here and then make sure that it is not going to get caught. So this is what it looks like now. The facing has been attached. It goes all the way to the end where the straps are, all the way around the neck. So we're going to just sew all of this. Okay, so now that I've put together the facing on the bodice, I need to understitch to make sure that the facing stays where it's meant to stay. So I'm just going to press, well, I'll show you. Okay, so this is the facing which is attached now to the bodice. So I'm going to press this seam upwards and then we're going to understitch on this side right next to the edge so that the seam which has been pressed upwards stays there. Okay, I'm going to do that. And so now comes the time to put together the skirt part. So my original pattern and sample had three panels for the skirt. But the fabric that I have for this, I didn't have enough for three panels, so I could only do two panels, which is not so bad. I mean, it's still puffy enough, but I would have, I think, you know, obviously with three panels, it would have been a lot puffier than this. And if I had had more fabric, it would have been longer than this. This jacket just barely covers my butt, and I would have really liked it to be uh, just above knee, probably, because it probably would look nicer. Also, these birds are going crazy. Can you hear them? I think they like built a nest outside of this window and they're just always there like having a party. So I'm sorry if you hear like tweeting birds in the background constantly. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Ah yes, the skirt. So 
because it's a wrap jacket, you know, the side that wraps inside uh, doesn't necessarily have to have like heaps of fabric. So you might, like I needed to tweak my pattern piece so that one side of the front panel of this skirt was just the same width as the bodice length of that part, if that makes sense. Just because I didn't want to have too much gathering underneath which would inevitably make this part too puffy like more puffy than the rest of it so it wouldn't make any sense so one of your skirt panels will need to be just the width of the bodice and then from there the rest of it will be you know double the length uh double the yeah double the length or even triple if you want it to be super pu like super gathered um yeah so that's just something to note that the panel that goes that wraps on the inside does not need to have any gathers on it so you can just have a normal panel that is the same width as the bodice. Okay so I'm going to do a dramatic reenactment of attaching pockets to your skirt because I failed obviously to film it while I was doing the real thing and I ran out of black fabric to redo it so it would seem like I filmed it. So instead now I'm just going to do it in this mini version with different fabric. Of course you can watch another video on how to um, put pockets in to a skirt but I'm just going to show you this mini version, a dramatic reenactment if you will, of attaching pockets. So say for example you have your pocket here. Oh my god it's so small. Okay that's your pocket, you need four of these. This is your one of your skirt panels. So if this was a side seam and that was a side seam a pocket would go here, like two pockets on here, two pockets on there. So First, you want to take your pocket, so right sides up and then right sides facing, you will attach your pocket 12.5 centimeters down from the top, you'll put your pocket in place and you will sew down like a 0.5 centimeters into place. So as you can see, I sewn it into place <laughs> and then, so this is your right side. So right sides facing, you've sewn it into place and now you will press this open like this. So normally I would give this a press with an iron and then you just want to sew down like a top stitch down on here to keep the pocket in place. And so as you can see I've top stitched that, um, the pocket, so that the little seam stays in place. And then you would repeat that onto the other seam. And then you do that again on your other panel. And then from there, once you've done that, you would get right sides together and you would just put it on top and then sew around the side to create pockets. So in the case of this particular design, um, as mentioned, you have three panels for the skirt ignore the fact that they're all well small very small and not the right size uh, but this would be one of your front panels another one of your front panels with the mitered corners and then this would be your back panel so in order to attach your pockets you would obviously be lining it up with these side panels here that come from the back so these two well depending like one of these of your front panels will be the same width as your bodice and then the other one will be double because you're folding it in front and you want all the gathering and then this would also the back panel would also be quite large so you would you know put your pocket on that side and then on this side and you would top stitch in the same way as I showed before and that's essentially how your pocket should look like and then you know, right sides, you would sew them like so on that side and then on this side. And then you would have pockets on these seams. And these seams would then match up to the bodice side seams. So now that all your panels are sewn together, you will need to run two lines of base stitch along the top of the skirt panels to gather them up. And let me tell you, this process took forever like just go gentle when you're um gathering up the skirt especially depending on what type of fabric you have this was 
it's kind of thick and awkward so and the little balls on it made it even more awkward so I kept snagging my base stitch and then essentially breaking it so I'd have to keep running more base stitches um, basically this whole area is just a mess on the inside thank goodness it's all covered up by lining <laughs> Okay, so I have a slight problem now. So I have attempted to put together the skirt bottom to the top and because I went ahead and put pockets in it, I obviously have to line up the side seam to the side seam of the top. But because of that, the front panel isn't now as billowy and gathery as I would like it. The back is incredibly like voluminous if you can see it like it just has a lot more volume it's gathered nicely and then the front is just like pretty much completely flat to me this is what happens when you don't have enough fabric and you have drafted something that requires a lot of fabric ah so weirdly decided to add a dart at the front to make the top half smaller and then allow more gathering here also it would probably give a lot more shape to the top because at the moment it's incredibly boxy I'm thinking to allow for more gathering here in the front I need to make this smaller so I will put some darts in the front which may make it look a bit weird mm. but yes this is how it's looking so far. It looks like a monstrosity. I really like the volume here at the back. I really wish I had more fabric so that this front piece was the same amount of volume, but we need to work with what I've got. So let's mess around with the top to make it um, less bad. Hello again. It is after work, so... <laughs> I am staring at this jacket and after I uh, tried to fix it <laughs> by putting darts in the bodice to make it smaller, to then make it look appear like there are more gathers in the front, it sort of worked and then it sort of didn't. It still looks kind of bad. So I'm... <sighs> I don't know why I sewed it up. I should have just not done that. But I'm just going to go and like seam rip this now and even up the panels so that they make more sense. Uh, so this is going to take me some time and I will get back to you on my progress. Hello, it is now day, I don't know, a hundred of this project. I put together the skirt again after redoing bits of how messy it was and I still don't like it. So I think I'm going to rip it apart for the third time. Um, see how the the ruffling now is a more at the front, but now it's slightly less at the back. So, and also because this wraps over, there's like the under part, which is this part that wraps over on the inside, doesn't need to have ruffles because no one's going to see it. And I forgot about that. So, like the fact that it has two ruffles on the front side and it wraps over makes it really bulky on the front. And then the back is like less ruffly, so it looks uneven. <sighs> also, excuse my attire, I just did a workout. Go me! Because working out in ISO life is extremely hard when you cannot really go outside. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, there's too much ruffle at the front now, as opposed to before when it was too much ruffle at the back. So then, ooh, ooh. Um, I ripped up, ripped this out cut it to make it more even around the pockets and then re-ruffled it and uh and now yeah it's just it's just too much at the front so I'm gonna rip it out for the third time and redo it so that this wrap over part which is this part is flat so it's less ruffly at the front and then more of that ruffle will be at the back so I need to rework where the pockets sit again. Oh god. Ah. Why is life so hard? Aha, uh -huh. done it, finally. I think I'm 
happy with how it looks now. I don't think you can see it very well. Mm. Let me just put this on the mannequin instead. But basically, this is what it's looking like. <laughs> Can't see anything. And it's more even around the back and the front. I'll show you on the mannequin. Okay, so that's what it's looking like now. Please focus. Um, as you can see, there's more like even ruffling around the front. And then when I turn it to the back, it also has even ruffling because before that was pretty flat. But now I think it's looking as even as it possibly can be after ripping this skirt out three times. Oh, okay. So now the task is to create the lining. So constructing the lining is pretty much exactly the same uh, method as constructing the outer fabric. You know, you would first start off with sewing the shoulder seams of the front and back bodice together. Then you would gather up, get both of your sleeves, gather them up, put them in place on your bodice, sew them together, and then sew up the inseam. But because it's lining, you will need to leave uh, a gap on one part of the inseam to allow for the tie to go through. And then on your skirt, once you've gathered up your skirt and you've sewn it in place, uh, on one of your panels with um, a side seam, you will need to leave like a 20, 20 centimeter gap of unsewnness. And this is just so that you can, once we put it all together, you can pull out the jacket right ways out through the lining. So just leave a gap when you're sewing it up. So I put together the lining of the jacket, same method that I used for the jacket uh, shell. And I also around the raw edges uh, surged or overlocked. And so now I need to attach this to the main jacket. So here, I've created facing which will attach to the jacket. So this is the um, lining that has been pinned to the jacket, right sides facing. So this is the wrong side now. As you can see all the little raw edges are here, which I think I should probably serge later. So I'm going to just sew all the way around that is against the facing. I've left one section of the lining at the back, like 20 centimeters unsewn, because we are going to then sew the hem together and then have to pull it out right ways through the little hole in the back um, once I've sewn up the hem. Right, so I have pinned and sewn the lining to the facing and I left a 20 centimeter hole in the back because I will pull this through. I have pinned the hem together again right sides facing and I will sew all the way down and then flip it out and it should be working. Although here in the corner we will need to pin together to make a What's it called? A mitered corner? Meated corner? Corner? Mm. So once that's done, you want to sew a mitered corner. I will leave links in the description box below for some videos that I found very helpful for understanding mitered corners and how to construct them or just basically how to sew them in a nice way because I am still having Struggle Street learning how to do mitered corners properly. Obviously with like patterns that I've bought they've explained the mitered corners really well and obviously the pattern pieces fit together perfectly but with my pattern pieces they were kind of rubbish so I have definitely stuffed up the mitered, the mitered corners on my jacket but um, this is vaguely how you would put it together. Okay so I'm just going to show you how to draft some mitered corners if you are going to be making your own pattern. This is my skirt panel. I redrafted it because the original was too small. Um, so this one is 70 centimeters in length. So I want to have a hem that is five centimeters on both the opening and the hem. So what you want to do is mark your five centimeter line for your hem and then you will fold it up to get this little corner and from there you will fold it like so so 
So you got, you folded it together like this. You have now this weird little flappy thing. Um, so what you want to do is fold it back like so. And because I want to have a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, I'm going to measure from this fold line out 1.5 centimeters and draw a line. So I've drawn in my line now and I want to flip it back the other way and draw in the same line. So 1.5 centimeters from here, which you can vaguely see there. So basically drawing a line like this to replicate what it would look like if you actually had fabric here and you wanted to sew it up with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance like this. So, you know, that little triangle won't exist. So what you want to do is like unwrap it now and you'll have a lot of lines. So you can vaguely, like you can sort of see where I've put my draw lines. So make note of this point here and then that point there. So this is the line that you want to draw against and cut off because the gap between here and here is 1.5 centimeters, which is what you are going to sew. So I'm just going to draw that in. So I've drawn in that line and now we're just going to cut that off and I'll show you how it wraps up. Okay, so that is your mitered corner now that you've found the little points and if you fold it like so, it's five centimeters, five centimeters, you will see that this little sticky arty bit is the part that you would be sewing on your fabric, which is a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. Hello and welcome back to another mini-sode uh, where I teach you how to do a mitered corner because um, when I was obviously filming everything it didn't work out very well, one, and also uh, it's just too big to show. So I decided to do a mini version so it would make more sense. So this is the pattern, like a miniaturized version of your main fabric pattern piece and then this is the lining. So your lining needs to stop at this point here. So this is added seam allowance, so it can attach to the top and it will stop here and attach like so. And there's seam allowance here and here. So that's how it should be. This will meet this at the bottom and just sew together. So here is the pattern pieces in miniaturized form. Your lining, your main fabric. So I've decided to go for this miniaturized version, I've decided to go with a two centimeter hem. So obviously you would have already sewn up the entire garment and the only thing left to do is to seal up the hem before you turn it right ways out. And then of course you need to do your mitered corners. So here we're going to sew the lining to the main fabric. So on this side and also at the hem. So I'll just sew that together and show you what it looks like. So I've sewn together the side seam here and to make it easier I've also pressed it by the amount that you wanted your hem and your facing to be. So this is the facing um, on the one side and this is the hem. So two centimeters on both sides. I pressed it up. So now I'm going to sew this lining to the hem. And on the real thing, and when you're sewing the lining hem to the main fabric hem, you would stop one centimeter from the edge. But on this one, because it's so small, I'll stop a little bit from the edge to try to replicate that. Uh, but yeah, I'll sew this together and show you. Okay, so this is what it's looking like now. So I have sewn it just before the edge here stopping just like a few centimeters away from the edge here. So when you press your hem to the right width, it will create this little point here. If you've drafted everything correctly, it will create this little flap here, which will you will then sew down a straight line here. So when you go to sew this little flap here, you would just pinch it together and just flatten it out like so. And then you would sew down between here and here with however much your seam allowance is. In this case, I believe my seam allowance, I made it on this little 
sample. I made it one centimeter. So I'm gonna sew down one centimeter from here to here and we should have like a nice mitered corner when I flip it out right ways out. So as you can see, that's how I would be sewing it. One centimeter from that edge. Okay, so I've sewn together that little flap. <laughs> And so on the real thing, you would trim that back so that it's not um, bulky. And then we would flip this right ways out. So let's just do that and see what it looks like. So this is what it should be looking like now. And then you would flip it right ways out like so. And give it a good press. And that is your mitered corner. Ta-da! <laughs> so this is what a uh, mitered corner should look like once you've done it um, and if you have drafted it correctly, which when I did that did not really work out the first time around and yet I still continued with it because uh, all my measurements were wrong. So this is what it should look like if you've done it correctly with all the instructions that I've just shown before about how to draft a mitered corner and you should come out looking like this. So when I was making my jacket I did not realize that the lining actually had to stop at this corner here. I actually drafted it so that it would be at this line here when really it should be stopping at this corner because if you have too much lining, uh, which I did have, it ended up just bunching up everywhere in the here and you would have like this massive bulk of fabric everywhere so it's important to make sure that your lining stops at this corner once you've drafted your mitered corner on the main fabric your lining will stop at this point here so hopefully that all makes sense but I'll leave a few links in the description box below about mitered corners and how to sew them and draft them and yeah hopefully your mitered corners turn out better than mine <laughs> The next part is to finish off the sleeves. Okay, so when it's time to finish off the sleeves, so that is putting elastic on the sleeve to make it puffy, what you would do is, obviously you've put together your lining, so you just push the lining in through the sleeve, like so, and then you'd sew those two pieces together, the lining and the main fabric together with a base stitch just to keep it in place. And then from there, what I would do is like once this has all been base stitched together so it's like not moving anywhere I would then turn my jacket inside out so that is it inside out and then from there I would essentially just fold this the hem of the sleeve down twice so one centimeter press and then fold it down again another centimeter press and then sew all the way around and then just leave a gap um, in the middle somewhere around here to then feed through the elastic and then once that's done and you've uh, knotted the elastic and sewn it together you can seal up the hole and then you've got a sleeve and then you can you know pull it right ways out again so basically that's just a simple method of finishing off the sleeves to make an elastic casing um, yeah and then you'll get this puffy sleeve I used um, an elastic that is 0.5 centimeters in width so basically, it's just a very thin elastic will do. You can make this more of a thicker hem if you wanted to, but I decided to make it rather thin. So I used a 0.5 um, centimeter in width elastic to thread through. So now it's time to top stitch around the facing and the hem. So to keep your lining and facing in place, now you would have to just top stitch around the opening all the way to the end and around the hem and around. The bottom so the measurement of the facing is about five centimeters so i would top stitch um, about four and a half centimeters from the edge just because you want it to you know end here and it looks better wider but i was kind of scared because as you can see it's a bit that's where the line is I actually only top stitched three centimeters from the edge instead of four and a half, which I should have done because I stuffed up the hem. Essentially, the hem is all uh, very wonky, like that's gross. This is like bigger and smaller, like it's not very good. So just to keep it consistent, because I did not know what I was doing, I pretty much just sewed all the way around just by 
three centimeters as, as a top stitch. And so lastly, you just want to clean up any loose threads that you find on your garment, which I'm sure they're everywhere. If you're anything like me, you just leave all your tails all over the place. Um, yeah, just clip them all off. And then of course you want to sew up the inside of the lining where you left that gap. And on the inseam of the bodice here, you have like a little opening so that you can pull through the tie on the inside. You just want to, I secured that in place by just pulling the tie as far far as it go and just like stitching in place and then just sewing it down against the lining. So this is what it looks like on. Um, you probably can't see but it just, yeah it's too short. See how like it barely covers my butt <laughs> and uh, it's not ideal. So I've been just like trying to figure out what to style this with and because it's a little bit short um, it just looks better with an all black sort of outfit but I haven't I think maybe like some cropped slacks would also look nice with it um, but yeah I'm just wearing like a thrifted skirt that I got and my very extremely old Uniqlo um, jumper which has a hole in it uh, keep wearing it also if you hear grasping mode I'm sorry yes that yeah see how it's I don't know, you can't tell because it's black. It just looks a bit weird that it's got like this drop and then blip on like in a place that is a little bit strange. So I feel like in retrospect, in, for a future make, I should make it a little bit higher instead of a really long drop shoulder. But in general, it's quite cute. I quite like it. Definitely ripping out the skirt three times made a difference to at least even out the volume of it. Um, this particular type of material is very puffy, uh, but if I had something that was less puffy I think I would have still gone with three panels and of course make it longer so that it's covering my butt, maybe go down just above the knee. Um, I think I would make a more versatile jacket because at the moment, yeah, like I said, quite short, so there's only a few amount of things that would look nice with it so I have to mess around with styling because yeah but it's so puffy and that is it so I hope that this has somehow been instructive and informative for you I'm sorry if it didn't make any sense but I tried to explain it as best as I could from what I did mm. uh, I'm very sorry but you know, I would highly recommend that if you have not made a lion jacket before and you would like to learn how to make one, and my video and my instructions just now were completely confusing, I would suggest just purchasing one of the indie patterns out there that um, has a lion jacket option. So the one that I would recommend is the Stacker Jacket by Paper Cut Patterns. I have a review on that. It was my first adventure into uh, making a lion jacket and from learning all those skills I just applied them to this. Uh, granted I stuff up a lot of things because my pattern pieces were 100% rubbish but you know the basics were kind of there so I would definitely recommend if you're scared of making lined things jumping into a indie pattern that will hold your hand throughout the whole process is high on my list so I hope that this um, would you call it a tutorial? This insight into making this jacket has been helpful in some way or has inspired you to try and make something like this from your own clothes um, using them as a template. I'll leave a lot of links in the description box below for some useful videos that I found helpful when constructing this jacket. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of me and more of my sewing adventures, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.